Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I'm Gary Smith and I'm here in the middle of the beautiful and historic Covent Garden to bring you today's video. And today we're going to be reviewing the webcomic Purifier by Alex Stacey. But first, two notices. Uh, one, I just want to make a quick apology to Alex that this review has taken so long to do. Uh, I originally said I'd be reviewing his webcomic back in December 2020 when he first put out the request for reviews for this comic. Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to come out in the City of London and do my review here for reasons that will come apparent in a few moments. Uh, but then, unfortunately, London was put into Tier 3 in lockdown shortly afterwards and it just didn't feel safe to come out and do this kind of review in public at the time. Uh, the second review uh, notice is that this review will of course contain spoilers for the webcomic so if you do not want to be spoiled before reading it please click the link below this video to go and read this webcomic and then come back for the review. So what is this webcomic about? Well set in 1937 this webcomic captures London in the middle of a pandemic. A darkly familiar thing for anyone who's been living through 2020 and 2021. But unfortunately for them, they're not dealing with just COVID. No, 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 no. They're dealing with something far more dark and dangerous. The plague, otherwise known as the Black Death. And the story centres on a character called Tilly, a inquisitor slash plague doctor whose job it is to go out there and find the plague and eliminate it by any means necessary. A job that is made far more difficult by the fact that the populace has a bunch of wild conspiracy theories and myths about the government's role in the pandemic. They believe that the uh, witch doc the uh, plague doctors, sorry, uh, are not there to put them in quarantine as uh, they claim to be, but to eliminate them. And unfortunately, we do see Tilly have to execute someone very, in, very, very early in this comic as that person finds out that they've got the plague and tries to escape detection. And unfortunately, has to be eliminated for the betterment of the general public. Tilly just can't, uh, Tilly and the government, I guess by extension, can't just risk someone getting out there and spreading the plague wherever they go. Two other people, though, are taken into quarantine and they see that actually these myths of them going to be like shot out back the moment they go through those doors aren't true. Turns out that the reason that a lot of people go into these places and never come back out is that they're dealing with a disease that has a 40% mortality rate at the best of times. So, yeah. Combine that with a bit of hysteria from people worrying that they're going to be killed and then trying to escape, leading to their death. Uh, you can see why these myths and urban legends start, but don't really necessarily carry a whole, a whole lot of truth. A little kernel of truth that if you flee, you'll get shot and burned, but otherwise, that's not the case. The story then goes on to East London, where you follow uh, Tilly uh, dealing with uh, a bunch of houses that are dealing with the plague and firefighters and all these people trying to deal with a bunch of stuff that because basically the houses have been condemned and need to be incinerated to try and prevent the spread of the plague and they need to evacuate these places before they do that. Unfortunately, uh, one house in particular is a bit hostile to being evacuated, shoot at the authorities and Tilly goes in afterwards when they find some vials and that's kind of where the story ends at the moment. So there's not a whole lot going in the story so far, but I have to say I really love this setting. Maybe it's just me, but I really love dark and broody kind of comics and movies. Um, and given the state of the world right now, I guess, I do have an odd fascination with pandemic related uh, popular media. And so it's very nice to see this kind of comic have a weird cultural relevance to me at the time. Obviously I live in London, and this is why I decided to come out and kind of show you a bit of London in the background of this video um, to give you a sight, I guess, of one of the places mentioned in the webcomic, which is why I decided to come to Covent Garden because it's actually mentioned in panel 37, uh, no, sorry, panel 38, it's mentioned, uh, or page 38, and it was probably the closest place where I lived that I could go and show you a place that's actually mentioned in a comic. Now, a lot of these things behind me, the shops and whatever, probably weren't around in the time period of the, co of the comic, uh, or at least have been heavily modified since then. But a place that you should find existing in the time of the webcomic is this place behind me, St. Paul's Church. 
uh, a church that has been here for a long, long time. In fact, on the front of it, it says that this parish having been destroyed by fire in the Great Fire of London was rebuilt after that, so was around for 1937. Other great representations of London actually in this comic, because this comic has represented London really, really faithfully. On panel 43, there's a fantastically hand-drawn map showing you a large area of the centre of London where this will be on the map, by the way. Covent Garden will feature on that map, as does where I live, which is always a pleasure to see. And I just love the detail that Alex Stacey has put into that map. Yes, he said it was traced or copied from a pre-existing map, as I'd expect them to do. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily ever expect anyone to go to that detail for a webcomic. You know, maybe just a sketch of like the Thames and a, a few dotted houses and buildings and streets. But the level of detail he goes to is extreme. Not only does he capture the region of the Thames really well, he captures Hyde Park, Battersea Park. He, as I say, captured the kind of the region of London where I live. So I can actually like pinpoint the street where I live on that map. That's just such fantastic levels of detail. Other great representation in this comic so far is also on panel uh, on page 37 with Bletchley Palace. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bletchley Palace was the home of Alan Turing and his Codebreaker team during the World War II. It is also the birthplace of the modern computer, where uh, basically Churchill, uh, there's actually a famous story about that, where Churchill went into Bletchley Palace one day, saw Alan Turing and his team were doing and wrote them a blank check to do whatever it needed they needed to do, basically. And because of that, we have the modern computer today, thanks to their team. And more importantly, mostly thanks to Alan Turing himself, who Alex does include in the comic, though he's dealing with a little bit something different than breaking the German's Enigma code. He's dealing with a system, I guess, that he's built to help the government track and trace um, where the sites of the pandemic, you know, plague locations are with a great light up uh, switchboard type thing where, you know, places light up as they're, you know, be having plagues denoted there or being eliminated or whatever. Uh, and I have to say, probably does function a lot better than the actual track and trace program that London has been, or the UK has been using over the COVID pandemic. So, uh, yeah, I guess, Alex, that's a, a, a great feature there so far. So yeah, really, uh, I have to say, I really love the fact that London is represented as a Brit. It's really nice to see a correct representation of Britain or a more faithful representation of Britain in uh, the comic, up to and including the phrase Gordon Bennett. Seriously, I have literally no idea where Alex Stacey ever heard that phrase, but seeing the phrase Gordon Bennett included in a webcomic written by a non-Brit was not something I ever expected to see. As for the art style, I guess there's something else I should mention. I really like Alex's art style. He seems to kind of carry this art style through all of his comic writing, uh, uh, comic book stuff. Um, he also seems to have something very similar to this art books, uh, this comic style in his other comic book that he's done uh, about uh, sewer workers, which I cannot for the life of me remember the name from. But again, I'll link that webcomic down below, uh, assuming it's okay with Alex, who I'll show this video to first to make sure it's okay to put those links below uh, but yeah basically I have to say uh, if you like dark brooding comics set in a pandemic era London and Great Britain featuring featuring real historic characters like Alan Turing and actually really likeable so far main protagonist uh, I really like Tilly's character so far, uh, the gruff, no-nonsense inquisitor who has to do what they need to do but doesn't really take any joy in it either um, and I really, really do hope we get to see more pages of this soon because, I, you know, I'm just really enjoying this webcomic. Um, so yeah, uh, this ha is a fantastic, fantastic uh, webcomic and if my recommendation means anything, please go forth and read. Click the links below and read it. And by the way, if you really do enjoy it, please go and tell Alex that you're enjoying his work. He is a fantastic content creator. Uh, he does a lot more than webcomics, but obviously this is a webcomic review. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know about him personally, but I know from my personal experience that content creators don't get 
really enough appreciation. And when you do works as wonderful and as high quality as Alex has done here, he really deserves some people to go down and just say how amazing his work is, how much they've enjoyed his work. So please go and just tell him how you feel if you really enjoy the webcomic afterwards. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, my review here today. Hopefully uh, this has encouraged you to go and read it. And if Alex, you see this review, hopefully I've done your work even the slightest bit of justice. I know I can ramble on a bit and I'm sure this video hasn't been edited all that amazing. It's still something I need to improve at a lot. But yes, thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you next time.